exciting. So excited right now. Oh my god. I'm gonna wait. He's coming soon, Ronnie. Don't worry. I have to introduce him first. It's gonna be pretty long. <sighs> okay. Is Celia in the background? With Sonora Matancera? Okay. Hello, Crystal. So good to see you. Glad you have joined this because I'm about to speak to one of the most hardworking actors possible. That sounded weird, but that I know. The GOAT. There you go. Maddie is in the building. Of course she is. You know what? I'm going to start introducing him. Just because I had no idea... I'm multitasking, working, and watching your video. Love it. I love that, you know, very nice. Love you. Glad you're in here. Um, so, I'm about to introduce Roby Ramos. I had no idea how much he actually worked. Like, because we've never spoken on all the projects he has done. Hector, my boyfriend, would always tell me about it, but I wasn't aware. I did my homework. I looked up everything he has done, and it's a lot. So, here we go. He is a theater and cinema actor. He is a mix of hysterically funny and heartbreaking at the same time. Cuban-American, and he wears Cuba so well. Um, we're gonna get more into that, but really, like, Natalie Zay is in the building, too. Sorry, I get, like, distracted. Um, he's been doing plays and films as far as I could even, like, look up like i went on his instagram i was looking at everything he's ever done roby ramos you've been working so hard and so much for such a long time i can't wait to hear more about this he's been in plays like la puta vida he was a director he was in golondrinas alpha 66 as the writer which was performed in florida and new york also roby if i'm wrong about any of this correct me when you're you have joined this um hysterical the mofo with the hat spit the Bastard, Melt, Amparo, which was here in Miami for 14 weeks, which was crazy. It's the longest freaking play I've ever seen in Florida. Um, Glass Courts, Wall, and Fin de Siglo. And then for films and series, he's done A Crime to Remember, On Settling Down, Extra Innings, which actually recently premiered here in Miami. Um, ABC's Deception as a co-star, The Blacklist, Bad Candy, Netflix, um, Orange is the New Black, and Los Plantados. Roby, you've done so much. I'm about to bring you in this thing because I just have so many questions for you. Roby. Yo. Dude. Dude. <laughs> That intro, though. What do you think about it? You've done <laughs> so much, dude. Damn, I feel like I'm on Jimmy Fallon or some shit. Dude. Stop it. I'm, I'm like, stunned. I was telling Hector that you've, you're, like, one of the hardest working actors I've known ever. Like, and I know a lot of actors. So I really want to yeah. know, like, what your journey's like. Like, mm. you've done so many plays. I'm pretty sure I've, I've like, left some out because Fernanda, because um, I was just looking at all of this. So let's start in the beginning. When did you start acting? I started acting after high school. So I went to um, Miami-Dade uh -huh. and I was studying psychology. Um, and I, I think I did like a year and a half and then I started uh, I started studying acting. Now, the way I started acting was kind of weird. Like, I've tried to like make up what the fuck happened, but I actually legitimately don't remember exactly um, really? where the inspiration like to do it came from. Um, mm -hmm. I that time also in my life was like super murky because I had played baseball since I was like five years old. That's what I thought I was gonna do. Wow. And, 
And then all of a sudden, like I'm out of high school, I was kind of, you know, I did, I did my, my few things in high school. I don't know if Hector has told me a little <laughs> bit about our, our, our travels, dude. But, uh, but so I wasn't like the best high school student. And, um, and then when I got out of high school, I had to figure out what the hell I was going to do because baseball was out of the, out of the picture. And, um, and then I just started searching. I think I had like really good teachers at Dade right. that, that really guided me big time. Um, Amazing. They had us writing a lot, which was helpful right. for me to get my thoughts on a page instead of like in my head. And, you know, it's, it's really, yeah, 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 exactly, dude. No, I feel you. So, I, I so yeah, and then I, I started, I started doing, I, I think I started with Anna Panero, which was a, a, a teacher in the beach. I know. Yeah. I was about to ask you, that's one of my first questions. So theater came first, right? Yeah. For cinema. And I was going to ask you how, how I wrote it here, how meaningful is um, Anna Panero's Miami Beach apartment to your career as an oh. actor? Oh, dude, I, I was telling uh, Janessa, who's, who's my wife, um, yes, my friend. Think... Oh wait, so for intro, I was gonna do that. And I totally missed it, and I'm so pissed. You're uh -huh. my boyfriend's best friend and one of my closest friends now, husband. So that's awesome. That was part of the Here intro. Of my okay, okay. But uh, yeah, so I, uh, I mean that that meant everything to me. I think um, the 420, which is the no, it's not 420. It's um, God, I forget the 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 number right now, but I want to make that shit like the, the, uh, my production company. I want to name it after that, um, apartment because it was like, it, I mean, it was, it was everything. I walked in there. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. And I left knowing exactly what I wanted to do. Wow. Um, so she was very meaningful to you. And you still talk to her? Yeah. 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 We, we keep in touch. Um, she was my first mentor in acting like mentor. What was her technique? She, so she makes a little bit of everything, you know, but mm -hmm. I think it was a lot of Strasbourg. Um, I didn't mm -hmm. know at the time, you know, I came to later to figure it out, but it was a lot about channeling whatever emotions you had in your life. And mm -hmm. that connected with me big time, especially at that time where I was, I didn't know what the hell I was doing with my life. Mm -hmm. um, it allowed me to like vent and find a way to express myself through acting, you, are, you know? Right. So, so it it yeah, started, it was very therapeutic, ther therapeutic. It started off that way. Totally. Yeah. And it still is in, in a way, you know, but it, it kind of changes. You start doing TV and it's more about, you know, do you fit that small little part? And, and then how do you bring yourself to that part and stuff like that? It becomes the, the issue. But in theater, I, that, I feel theater is a lot better for that kind of. Yeah. You know, allowing you to, yeah. 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 So you, how long did you act for in Miami, Florida before you moved to New York City? I think it was a year and a half. You acted here for a year and then you, yeah. how did you decide to move to one of the biggest cities for acting where like competition is in every corner? Well, like, it was her, you... it, it was Anna. So Anna lived in, in New York previous. Uh -huh. And she had lived there like, I think for like 40 years and she had taught there. She had gone to school there. She had gone to school at Terry Schreiber. You attended there, too. Right. So she told me about Terry Shriver. She knew a teacher named Carol Reynolds who does a lot of body work. Amazing teacher in, in New York. And, um, and so I went up with a friend of mine, and we, we auditioned. And, and I got into the Shriver uh, one-year conservatory. And then it was about, like, I, you know, do I drop out of Miami-Dade? What do I do? Yeah. Um, I actually... Uh, to backtrack a little bit, the first play that I, I auditioned for at Miami Dade was called Come Blow Your Horn. And it was the first play I had ever done ever in my life. Never done anything. Uh, and I showed up, but I had taken classes with Anne, which was the key. And, um, and uh, God, I'm looking at Migs. Good job, Wait. Migs. Way to throw me off. <laughs> I appreciate it, dog. I appreciate that, Migs. Um, but <laughs> but <laughs> so... So I had that, I had that, I went, I went into that audition and I got the call back. It was for the lead, uh, Alan Baker, which was so many freaking lines. I had never memorized anything in my life. Um, I go to the callback and the way it worked was 
uh, they kept keeping people till the end, you know? And I was the last actor there, so uh, going in for the role of Alan, of the lead. So I was like, oh, I think I have a pretty good shot, you know what I mean? I go in the room, uh, they're, they're like, uh, are you available such and such dates? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm available. At the time I had a class, a night class, which mm -hmm. uh, conflicted with the rehearsals. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I had to make a decision. And the night class was actually psychology, a psychology course. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of, you know, that was make or break. Am I gonna do the play uh, and, and drop out of this psychology class? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to stay in psychology and, you know, not take the risk? Right. And, and I ended up taking the risk. You know, I got the part. The next day they had the list up. I went to check the list. I was on the list. And then, and then I freaked the fuck out because uh, I didn't know what I was doing. Now you doing. have to learn oh, it. Exactly. Now I have to do it. Exactly. So Anna, actually, we went through the whole script. Like from beginning to end, every line we had intentions for every line, wow. which I don't do anymore. But it was as a like, as an actor starting out, it was invaluable because it gave me a sense of what I was doing up there. If not, I would have been lost, you know. Yeah. So I had I had an intention for each line of the play, even if the and line was low. And she helped you break down the whole entire script. She, she yeah, she broke down the whole script of me, and then there was a bunch of I had a bunch of monologues on the phone. And we broke that down as well, which I would have never been able to do by myself. I mean, I had no, yeah. no idea. And then the director of uh, Come Blow Your Horn was the, um, I guess you call the program director at Miami Dade. And wow. she didn't know I had never acted. I never told her. I, she thought I was an actor, you know? Okay. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh. <laughs> let me just let me just not tell her and just show her that I can't do this. Cause hey, that's yeah, dude. Because like, if I would have told her, she would have never. You know, she would have trusted the risk. maybe that you were gonna be able to pull that because it's hard memorizing for the first dude. time. What? She, but she, yeah, yeah. And so, so my point was that I I asked the program director after a year of being with them. I did two plays that day. I did that. Come blow your horn, which was insane. And then I did uh, Shakespeare, uh, Much Ado About Nothing. And, oh, that's um, that I heard about. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 we did that one, which was funny, you know. Uh, doing Shakespeare on date was, was interesting. But it was fun, you know. I, I learned some Shakespeare. Now I'm more like, you know, I'm more into new, new work, you know. New I think work. we got to, yeah, dude, we got to make new work. I'm tired of the shit of, like, replaying the same fucking plays over and over again. Um, I have strong feelings about that shit. We can go into it if you want. But. Yeah, no, let's get into it. Um, when you, I just want to ask you something because did you really watch The Dark Knight five times in the theater? Oh, easily, dude. Really? Easily five times. It could be. And more. that's what made you I, be an actor for film. Am I right? Well, that, that's it. Yeah. So right around that same time that film came out, right when I was doing all those plays and going for all those things. And I would go to the play, I would go see the movie with different people. So I would see it through their eyes, you know, that kind of thing. Wow. Which I still That's like so to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Vanessa know, is in the building. I love her. She's my favorite too. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, mm -hmm. well, that's one person. I, I watch a bunch of shit through her eyes. She's super, um, she's super real, dude. I, I you know, I, everything I do, I ask her about it. Is it good? Is it uh, writing anything? You know, uh, what do you feel about this? Is it corny? Is it this? Is it that? I run yeah. everything through her. Yeah, totally. That's so, so important that you have someone that supports your dreams, right? Yeah. By your side. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to yeah. 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 So then we're going to get into new works. How, what do you mean by that? That now you're interested in new stuff. You're tired of, because you've done so much plays, so many plays. And you've done like, you actually, I mean, like, dude, I didn't even know you had done so much. Like, so what are you in, into now that you were saying that you want to do new stuff? Well, when I moved to New York, I did a lot of work and, and some of the, some of it was new work, but then there was also like the plays that everyone keeps doing, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, and I understand the, the need for like learning classical theater and stuff in school and all that. And there, and, and there's a beauty to Shakespeare, no doubt. Yeah. But it's like, sometimes I feel like it's a lazy way out. Like, dude, 
stop doing much ado about nothing a hundred times. Yeah. Write your own play that says the same thing. Exactly. 100%. Uh, yeah. And you know, even yeah. with movies, though, it's the same thing. Remakes yeah, yeah, yeah. and remakes. We should be more original now and write our own stories. You're a writer. You wrote a play called, uh, I have it here. Uh, Alpha 66. Alpha 66. Yeah, that was wild. That, that came out of just like, you know, being in New York and, and then I, I found another mentor in New York. Her name was Aminta de Lara. Mm -hmm. And she was, a, she is a, a Venezuelan director um, and an actress. And mm -hmm. uh, she had been in New York for many years and she, she opened my world up to the, the experimental theater, mm -hmm. which was never in the, in the cards for me. I was like super uh, naturalistic type of like uh, Marlon Brando type of thing, which I still am. I, I mean, that guy mm -hmm. is my everything in terms of like looking at somebody Great. that, yeah, yeah, I love his natural shit and I love that. But then she forced me to, to kind of uh, to pull back from that. And I had to start acting without props, without, you know, really wow. anywhere to sit. You know, there's like a fucking light in your face, super, <laughs> super That's experimental naked. dude. Completely like, naked. Completely yeah, naked. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, yeah, scary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it forced me to like dig deep there and, and find another way to express myself rather than, you know, kind of how I'm talking to you now is, is how I try to act, just blah, 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 and I'm moving and I'm touching things and da, da, da. No With habits. Her. That's what you call in yeah. theater habits. Right. Habits, like, you know, even if it's like touching this or yes. the hair. Yeah. Habits. Yeah. Complete habits. You got to take that man. away because then you're going to be in a cage in every, in every like, um, character that you develop, it's gonna Absolutely. go through all of that, and it's yeah, exactly. it's crazy. Exactly, mm -hmm. and then so working with her, um, she started to tell me I had to write. You know, she feels a lot of the ways that I feel about make your own work. I got a lot of that through her. I took a bunch from her, and um, and it really it really propelled me to start thinking, you know, on my own. And how do I how do I um, how do I start trying to be original rather than just, um, you know, going with the flow or doing with other, what other people are doing, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So she got me to write my own play and I, and I started writing Alpha 66 and she, she taught me everything, man, structure, um, drama. Uh, um. Yeah, dude, it's, you know, I, there's formulas to it that, that are important. And she, and she was there to, to teach me that. So that was my second mentor. Mentors is the biggest thing, you know, we can yeah. find, like, really. For sure, um, for sure. Um, have you ever had trouble because some, uh, people that do theater, right after it's done, there's a down part to it that a lot of people don't know. So, for example, you recently did Amparo here in Miami for yeah. 14 weeks. That's a very long time. Yeah. What happened right after that? Did you, have you ever have felt that, that you feel down, like it just ended? How did you feel on the last day of Amparo? Oh, the last day of Amparo? <laughs> I, I cried like a baby, dude. I'm a big crier, bro. I, Hector's seen me cry a couple times. Um, yeah. You can tell you about it. But yeah, no, I, I just, I, but you know, with Amparo, it was interesting. I felt a little bit of relief. In the sense yeah. that, you know, we, we really grinded out during that play. I mean, it was hard work, dude. It was like dealing with the it was crowd. Emotional. Emotional, emotional work, I feel like. Know? Yeah, yeah. My grandma passed. Um, I, I, like, I think maybe the month before we finished doing the play. And I had a lot of things, you know, there was a lot of stuff from my real life that connected to the character. Um, and that that's credit to Vanessa really, like... Um, listening to the actors and then picking up on their, their, their real lives and, and stuff like that. And she, and she mixed in a, a lot of things, man. The, the grandfather had um, dementia. My grandfather had dementia at the time. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was a lot of shit, dude. How did you handle that though? Because is it easy for you to turn on and off? And when I say that, you know, like the, the theater, uh, language where it's like, okay, I'm on and I don't take it home. Was it hard for you to do that? Or has there been any project that it, it really is hard for you to disconnect from? Hmm. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, Amparo is, is like unique in that it's so ingrained into who I am um, yeah. that, I mean, I, I had no choice but to take it home because I went home and, and you know, I'd go see my, my grandfather in the home and he, he has dementia and there he is, you know? That, and that's so, heavy. yeah, 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 no, it was, it, was, it was heavy. That's why I say when, when we finished it, was, it I felt relief. Um, and that yeah. we were able to tell the story that that we we really wanted to tell about our ancestors, you know. Um, right. You, you were you were Cuba so well, and that's what what's one thing I wanted to highlight because you inspire. Like for example, me watching you, I think Cuba all the time. Like you're so proud of where you're from. You carry it so well, and I think that's very important. It makes me want to carry Colombia on my back too. Mm. So. And even the Alpha 66, I know it was about Cuba too. Yeah. So how important is that for you to take that legacy to New York, to LA, to Miami? Like how important more, is that for you? More, more than Cuba for me, it's, it's my, my family. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no choice, but I mean, like I, before I even did acting, I would always ask my grandfather about what he went through. Um, and it was always in the kid, you know, when we're at dinner, we're talking about politics, we're talking about what happened to them, how uh, they were stripped of all of everything they had. Um, so when I, I guess, I don't know, I, I don't even know. It's just, it comes, Part comes of out of me. That's, that's, that's what I, that's, those are the stories I need to tell, you know. I love um, that. I love that you are going to tell new stories about it too. <laughs> yeah, I got so, to, yeah. In New York, what was the, what was your first job and what was the biggest struggle when you first moved over there? Dude, when I moved over there, I had a, so I did, so Schreiber was from 9.30 till I think 2.30. And then at 3.30, I got a job at a, uh, working a valet. Mm -hmm. And the valet was like 45 minutes from Schreiber, right? So I would get out of school at 2.30. I would get something to eat quick. And I would take the subway to the, to the valet. And then I'd be at the valet till like 11.30 at night. So from 3.30 to 11.30. And then the dudes that worked there, they didn't give a shit. They were like, you know, <laughs> we don't care that, you, that your shift ends at 11.30. Sometimes we need you to stay to 12 and 1.30 and you got to do it, you know. So right. I did that job for like dude maybe a month and a half and i could not fucking do it anymore with my schedule from from schreiber and all that i remember leaving like the subway like uh like at midnight just like dude what the fuck how, do, how does anybody do this i don't know what did i get myself into yeah exactly, exactly. what did i get exactly. myself into and so yeah. many people feel like that dude new york is 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 such a monster that's I mean, exactly. people that don't have help from family or from friends or whatever, I don't know how they do it. I really don't because it's, uh, I wouldn't have been able to do, like you said, I, I did a lot of plays and I wrote things and I directed and I mm -hmm. started theater companies and all that. I wouldn't have been able to do that if I, if I wasn't getting help from, from my family. Like, impossible. Yeah. Impo I, have, I have a tweet that I want to read to you and I want to, I want you to tell me about it. Like, <laughs> dude. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but you're researching hard. Okay, go, go ahead. It says, finally have a bed. I've been sleeping on an air mattress for six months. Hashtag inside the actor's studio. Hashtag <laughs> true Hollywood story. Yeah, Who wrote it's, that? It's James Linton, dude. Uh, yeah, that was, that was, so Hector actually went to the first um, a basement studio that I had. Yeah, it was a basement studio. I had like a little window on the top right uh, corner, barely any light got in there. Um, I had an air mattress. Um, uh, it was cold as shit. The, 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 the heater apparently wasn't working down there. Um, so we get freezing cold, which I'm, I'm good with the cold. I'm like a, a huge bear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Get but, uh, <laughs> she's got to Uh, but yeah, she, um, yeah, when, once she moved over there, we moved up to the one bedroom, thank God. And, uh, thank God. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that was that. That's that tweet right there. Yeah. 
So what, you know, did you ever have a moment where it's like, dude, I gotta like give up? Cause like, this is tough. Uh, no, no. No. So what keeps you from not giving up? Family? No, I, I think it's, um, I, I don't, I don't know of anything else I can do. <laughs> like really. You were born uh, for this. I guess, you know, I mean, I, I guess I could, I could go into psychology, you know, there's like, there's like things that, that I'm curious about a lot of things, mm -hmm. but I never, I never was like, oh, I need a plan B or, or anything like that. And it scared a lot of people. I mean, Janessa can testify, dude. Uh, if, if it meant, you know, losing everything, I had to sleep in the freaking park, I was going to do it, you know, um, And that's, that's pretty much it. You know, I, I, I never had, huh? I admire that. I admire yeah. that. A lot of people give up because they're not, they don't have that mentality of plan A. Um, but I'm really grateful to know people like you that um, they go all out. Like they just, they're not afraid to follow up their passion, but it's more than passion. It's who they are. Yeah. And that brings me to um, the other question. Oh, so how, <laughs> How was it getting casted for Netflix, Orange is the New Black? And how did you get, like, how did you, how did you feel about playing that type of character? Like, you Dude, know. Dude, that sucks, bro. I was, so, <laughs> I went, uh, I went in for that audition, and I kind of was like, fuck this, because I don't really care if I get this part, you know? Because mm -hmm. he's the ice cream man, and he's, he's hitting on this underage girl, and so... I was just like, if I don't get this, dude, fuck it. I, I don't want to be on TV anyways doing this shit. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so you were but, you were a pedo in an ice cream truck. Right, right. That a right. little girl would come to it. We were yeah. all very excited to see you. But in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, the things we have to dude. do and the characters we have to accept until we are able to pick our own characters and tell our own stories. That's It's a true, struggle. True. Yeah, yeah. You When know? I saw my Did parents, your friends I, bother you? Huh? Did your friends bother you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure they did. But what I remember is, is my parents, when I showed them the scene, they were excited to see it, right? And they see the scene, they're like, huh? Oh. <laughs> interesting, interesting. And then that's it. No, no fucking other comments <laughs> about it. We're just going to brush this shit nice. under the rug. Yeah. Nice, nice. Interesting. <laughs> so, um, what's the next step for for you well i want to get into i'm writing a script right now for for uh my boy hector uh, melina not hector zaya maybe the next oh one. i was like wow maybe the next one i'll write one for for uh, for a dj but uh okay. no but yeah i'm, I'm writing a, a a film for my boy and and it's and it's tied back to cuba of course um <laughs> but i'm trying to write it in a way where uh, I'm, I'm saying it's, it's obviously political because it deals with a guy who, an actor who defected from Cuba, but, uh, but it really has nothing to do with politics in the straightforward sense. You know, he's just trying to make it uh, in America. And uh, my bad, dude, I got you next time, <laughs> DJ, DJ Zaya, dude, I got you next time. Um, yeah. But no, so yeah, so I, I want to get into writing films. I want to direct films. Uh, and then I want to keep, you know, doing the TV acting work. Um, mm -hmm. Because that's, that's where the money's at, you know. I did a lot of theater for free in, in, in New York. And, and, um, and uh, now, I gotta, now I gotta make money, you know. Yeah. At some point, it becomes really about making money. But then I'm keeping my creative spirit alive by writing these, you know, Scripts. These, these scripts and, and trying to get them going. Yeah, for sure. I love that so much. Do you miss New York? Do you miss yes. being there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, New York's the best city in the world. Uh, like, hands down. Um, really? But, yeah, but the, 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 the career, it just it was leaning towards LA and, and then everything's gone so smoothly before this, this uh, virus. Everything was going so smoothly that it's just like that's where I gotta be, you know. Yeah, so. you were just you were just in LA and you had to come back to Miami. How was that for you? Because you were just starting. It sucked, to... dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I had booked. So the first audition I got in LA, I booked it. And wow. 
so like a week after I get to LA, I'm, I'm at a table read with like, um, with uh, just like spectacular actors from the show called Snowfall, mm -hmm. um, which I, I wasn't supposed to say, but whatever, we're here. Uh, <laughs> I, I had a feeling, that's why I smiled. You got it out of me, dude, you got it out of me. <laughs> yeah, so, so I was doing that table read and, it, and, it, and I was like, what the fuck? Like these dudes are, are all working actors. They're, they're like amazing actors. I had never been in a table read with such like beasts. And they, they were there on season four, so they, they have their characters wow. down, you know? They're, like, all, like, uh, right. yeah, it's jumping onto a moving train, you know? But so so I did one episode, and then I have two more episodes this season um, mm -hmm. to shoot. But we weren't able to shoot them because all this uh, all this started happening. It, it was terrible. Um, I know. I know. Yeah. But you know what? Do you have plans of going back to L.A.? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we're going back. Uh, I had left my car over there. Um, mm -hmm. So I got to go get my car. And then we, we, me and Janessa are moving into a new place over there in Burbank. So, yeah. I'm so happy for you guys. So I'm going to meet y'all. And um, no. that makes me very, very happy. And I like that, you know, everything is going so well in your career because – you do it so well and it's your passion and also now you're married so you know the future is bright yeah. having a family are you guys excited about that like do you ever think about that like how do you handle the next step do you always base it on your career or is it more into like you know no 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 la was also uh, partly because of you know we're thinking about starting a family we're thinking about all these things and new york is just not the place for that um, unless you have money, you know, exactly. and, um, so yeah. LA was, was a little bit of that too. You know, we had just gotten married, um, in October and, and then November I went to, to meet with the agents and the managers in, in LA. So it was, it was all kind of planned because of that, for sure. Some of that had to do with it. Um, but dude, I want to say about you that, <laughs> Wait, that I'm, I'm, fucking, I'm proud of you for, for that you're doing this first of all this is this is something that people talk about doing they don't do it um and and then putting yourself out there i know you did that short film um which i need to see you guys know me. really do i have to send it to you we're doing final edits because oh. i need to fix some things i feel like i always have to fix something but I'm going to send it to you literally like two weeks from now because I'm thinking of showing it May 20th on my birthday. Oh, yeah? Like a virtual yeah. type of vibe? Yeah, like a virtual premiere nice. thing. Just so people can see it because I feel like you yeah. know, we worked really hard for it, you know? Yeah. And I want to thank you because you were a huge help. You gave me pretty much an NYU class here in my in our living room. Uh, like you helped me so much, you really did, and I didn't even know you don't even know that visual package. It has gotten me so far, and now I'm able to teach other people because this is this is mainly why I did this thing, like the <laughs> life with friends, because I feel like I know so many talented, amazing human beings on this in this city or in New York that we all need to like help each other out. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm super yeah. excited. And, and what advice would you give someone? Your future kid. What if your future kid comes up to you and wow. says, Dad, I want to be an actor? <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> um, first, I, I would probably tell them, to. I, I don't know. Fuck, that's hard. Um, I think I got lucky that I found it when I did, which was 18, you know, and I didn't start doing it too young. Uh, I think sometimes people get jaded when they start, uh, acting too young and then also build bad habits sometimes, you know, cause you go into some of those high school classes and they're not really, uh, um, you know, like they're, I fucking, <laughs> one of the things I hate, dude, I, <laughs> Improv games, I get it, I get it, dude. I'm for the book <laughs> in the ice. I get all of that. But, dude, yeah. there's some of these things that it's just like you're wasting time, bro. That's yeah. what, what these some of these the things are doing. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I, I, I think um, oh, that's so tough, dude. 
I, I would first have to see how, I, I mean, talent is a real thing. And I, yeah. and being in New York, I saw a lot of people that, I mean, it's not that, it's just they had limited, like it was limited. Dude. I, I, I can't play the guitar. I can't, like, I've tried, you know what I mean? I don't have a talent at it. I'm sure if I worked at it, I could be pretty, I could be fine. Right. But if you're going to do this career and like you don't have support financially from family and other things, dude, you got to have talent, man. That's the number one thing. And then after that, you got to work your ass off. Like nonstop. Like non nonstop. Stop. Right, right. Yeah. Right. But, um, but I would have to see if they, if they have the talent. I mean, and then, and then go right. from there. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you got to stay honest. With you got to be real, bro. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be real. You, you can't be like, just because it's just like any friend, like you just come at them with good intentions, but you're <laughs> honest about something. Because yeah, if you man. care about someone, especially we're talking about kids, you're gonna be as real as possible. You gotta be right? real, dude. You gotta be real. Look, my heart was broken about baseball. I'm glad it was broken. You know, yeah. number one, I didn't have the same talent as some of my other peers at the time. But then, secondly, I didn't work hard enough for it. I was fucking, I was thinking about other things, you know, trying to hang out. Distracted. These people, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, distracted. <laughs> so, I feel you. You yeah. feel me. So, so, yeah, so, but I needed to learn that, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and so I think if you're starting this career, you know, I, 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 everyone try it for sure. But mm -hmm. then see if you have a natural, like, ability at it. Right. If it's and then after one. that. Right. And then after that, you know, throw yourself into it for sure. Right. Um, right. Um, so. I didn't know you studied psychology and that now it makes complete sense. You're someone that you're very aware of everything and people. Um, I've noticed that, you know, you are my boyfriend's best friend. So like I've noticed, you know, you have a way. And I think I wanted to ask you if like psychology helped you with acting. Because I think psychology and acting are brothers. But yeah, I, I see it that way. What yeah, totally. Totally. I mean, you mentioned the thing about the ice cream truck guy. And, and you know, of course, it was, a, it was a small role, right? But if that was a huge role in the, in the series, I would have to find a real way to connect with this guy and figure out what the, why is he doing what he's doing, you know? As, as much as I detest him. That's I'm, brave right there. You just said something that makes me, like, I agree 100% without judging the person. And this yeah. was a character that... Right. It's dark. It's, it's pretty dark. It's and you, dark. you were willing to connect with that yeah. person. Right. Right. It's fucked up. Yeah. I mean, sometimes as an actor, you have to find your way in to, to those kind of characters. Um, and... Uh, and that's the beauty of it. And then there, the, we all connect in some way, dude. I don't care. You know, I, I like, we, we were talking about Cuba. I, I hate Fidel Castro. I hate him, right? I have a natural hate in my heart because of my grandfather and my parents and everything. But if I was to play him, I have to find the humanity in him because guess what? He was fucking human, dude. We want to make him out to be like he's this, this monster or whatever. And okay, that's cool. And that's a simple way to like brush it off. But it's not, dude. This guy, you know, like I, I think I think Vicky's watching. She posted a uh, Vicky who's the director of Amparo. Yeah. She posted a, a picture of him as a boy with a, he had a lollipop in his mouth and he was with the other boys uh, in his school. And here's the kid, dude. This is a, a small kid. child that he's, he's got the same innocence as every other kid. And exactly. then he turns into this, this, psychopath later in life now what uh, now i gotta find what out happened? how that happened exactly what happened where exactly. was the little twist in his brain vicky just commented with a thumbs what up, up yeah, um, yeah yeah i i agree with you 100 percent, and that's something that i learned earlier in school someone had said something about hitler and i mean it's hitler but yeah. they were just kind of saying that it's a human there's good and bad you just there might be more bad but there has to be something like we're, I, I believe the same thing you said. We're all born equally like right. little kids. And then we grow up and trauma happens. Maybe, I don't know. So you finding mm -hmm. out, and I'm very curious about that too. And I think that's what makes an actor be so, um, so professional in what they do that they don't judge the character. 
they go and look at what happened. You know, there's always two sides of a story and you right. have to find the truth. And uh -huh. no, but they were just saying that Hitler, you know, everything that he did, monster, complete monster. But then somebody was saying, like, did he have love in his heart? And somebody said he loved his dog. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there was love, but we just don't see how or what, what happened. And yeah. um, wow. So psychology really is yeah. something that... Dude, there's a, there's a psychologist that... Um... His, his name is uh, Dr. Jordan B. Peterson, and he, he talks about Nazi Germany and how, how it got to be that Hitler was Hitler. You know, like a lot of people had to agree that we needed a Hitler. You know what I mean? He did, it wasn't just one guy who did all these things. There was, a, it was everybody, the, the crowd, the mass of people right. kind of built this, this monster that at the time they thought was necessary, you know? Exactly. Um, so finding out what it is about us as humans that that makes us fucking go to that dark side, you know what I mean? And that's what acting like for me. I, I that that's why I do acting for sure, hundred um, percent. And then I got lucky, like we spoke about, that I was good at it. Um, and I knew I was good at it because I have been bad at other things. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. I had been in baseball teams where, like, I wasn't the best player on the team. And the best <laughs> player on the team was able to do all the shit that I did, but he didn't get cut because he's the best player on the team. You understand? So I had to learn the hard way that I did, like, oh, I, I'm not good at this. And so I don't get the same privileges. I got to work a little harder, whatever the case may be. And, uh, and then when I found acting, I found something that I was good at for the first time in my life. It was the best shit that ever happened to me was finding it. I remember telling my mom, like, yo, I, and it's such a stupid thing. Like, now I think back, and I'm like, it's such a freaking 18-year-old naive kid, like, to think. But I was like, I feel like I can't die now. Which, what the fuck? I, I was 18 years old. I had never thought of that. But I was like, I feel like I can't die now because I found what I, what I need to do. Wait, Weird, you said dude. you think I, I can or can't? Can't. Can't. Okay. Yeah, okay. like I feel like I'm not gonna die because I have a mission that, for the first time in my life, I had a mission. I had something to strive for. Um, right. I think that was I real. Heard, there's a quote that says um, that the two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you find out why. And when you just said that, it's because maybe you found out that acting was what you were born to do, and you were super happy because there's people that still don't know. And it's something that's very critical that they're doing a job that they're unhappy doing. So it's like, it makes you way out, you know, like you found your passion. Yeah, there's hard times, but you know what? You found your passion. Right. Like you found something that you can sit on the sofa with Janessa and talk for three days straight. Right. You know what I mean? She wouldn't like it, but, but I talked about it for three days for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And, no, I and do, I, I do, I do. Know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Um, and I and that, that I don't know how I found it. I just I, I think I, well, I think it's what we spoke about was I started to write things down. Yeah. Um, and that allowed me to 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 figure out what was going on in my head and the thoughts mm -hmm. I was having, you know, um, self-awareness, right? Self-awareness. Exactly. Self-awareness. Exactly. And then uh, it's just I'm so curious. So I like to go there like you are somebody that thinks a lot and you're very curious about everything. How important is it for you to not do drugs? Oh, well, well, all right. We're getting into it. <laughs> uh, I really know. Well, I, I did drugs uh, for the first time. And well, I hope uh, my mom and my dad are not listening, but no, no, it's fine. <laughs> no, but I uh, mean like, no, because no, no, look, so I, sense, I, I do, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's dangerous. So with me, bro. I got lucky with, when it comes to drugs, which is that I had a bad reaction to the first time I ever. Me too. Right. Me too. Mm -hmm. So the first time I smoked weed, I had a terrible reaction, dude. I thought I met the devil and shit. I went, I, I went into Somebody, third person mode. like, what? <laughs> yeah. I went into third person mode. I was seeing myself from the sky, dude. Um, I don't know if the weed was, was laced or what, but so I had a terrible, I had a terrible 
reaction to it. Reaction. And that, that scared me from all the other drugs. Exactly. Thank and God I think my that's what... Says, yeah. She was oh, there for all the craziness. Thing. I love it. Yeah, I've yeah. heard it. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so then, so, so I guess I had that fear, right? And then as I grew older, I, I mean, I'm so grateful for it because uh, I think, you know, the drugs and all of that becomes a distraction, but also a crutch, you know? Oh, I, I don't want to yeah. go to that party or I'm... I'm I'm uh, I'm nervous before a show. Let me let me take a, a squig of the bottle. Let me let me drink this pill. Let me and I know actors like that. You know, exactly. They get sucked into that. So um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that, that that's yeah. what I mean though because I went to Lee Strasberg for two weeks, and um, one of the professors actually David Strasberg, which is um this the the son of uh, oh, Lee Strasberg. Oh. He said something like, you know, the method won't get you, um, won't kill you, but don't do drugs. And that really impacted me because I know how sensitive I am and how aware I am and, and how everything. Oh, my gosh. These comments are just I know, I know, I know. In the best way possible. That's I'm so happy to have everyone brother, in this What's up, Jay? What's up, Daddy? They just want some love, dude. That's all it is. I know. This is amazing. And they love you so much. <laughs> And I'm so happy. This has been like the packest live I've had in since I started this thing. That's how much people love you. We Robbie. got fam and out here, dude. I know. So yeah, so what I was saying is that, you know, he said that and I, I, I was I, I thought the same way you did, that I was so grateful that I was never uh I never liked drugs. Like I had a really bad reaction to it because it would have been a very dangerous thing, you know. So I'm grateful that you also um you know, realize that too, because you're such a talented, you rem and you know why I mentioned this? Because your talent is very raw, like, it makes me think of Philip Seymour Hoffman, mm -hmm. and it makes me think of those greats that they can write, that they started in theater, that they can, did that, now they're doing film, so all I'm saying is that I'm grateful that you, you're aware that um, you have limits, because some actors don't know that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and this business has, you know, like I said, you know, there's so many things that we're nervous about or we, some of us, everyone deals with some form of anxiety and shit and drugs and alcohol sometimes becomes the, uh, the way to numb it, you know? Yeah. Um, and in this, in this business, there's so many things, even this live, you know, like, I, this shit fucking is nerve wracking to me, dude. Right, me uh, too. So it's if so I was out. a fucking alcoholic i'd be downing you know something yeah. before i you know you can become a mess right, so we've seen hi ruth love ruth because we've seen actors that do take things before they go on stage oh yeah 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 that's normal you know what i mean i i've seen yeah. that and and it's really heartbreaking because in their head it's something but we're watching something else you I know, know what I'm saying? saying? I know. And then that's the other thing. Yeah, they're not aware of the difference it does to their performance. The scary ones are the ones that they don't. They don't. They're, 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 they're as good on stage high as they are sober. And that's scary because nobody's ever going to stop them. And no one's ever going to notice. And no one's going to tell exactly. them no. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. I love that. And um, yeah. Has your family always been supportive of what you're doing? Yeah. Since day one. You know Hector's family, they love you. Like, yeah. we've I love spoken that. about you. It's like, yeah. you have so much love, and I'm so grateful for that, too. I'm just grateful for this life, too. I was very... Because I have, I have so many questions to ask you. You know what I mean? Like, you've done so much, and you never brag about it. No, no. I mean, and the Does things... Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had to start to learn how to do that a little bit. Not brag, but just kind of like, hey, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. In the beginning, like my first six years or, yeah, like six years in New York, I, I never told anybody. I tried to keep it low key, you know, humble and that bullshit. But it, at some point you got to start to kind of like, you know, this is what I'm doing and I'm proud of mm -hmm. it. And, uh, and, um, and then also putting yourself out there. Like you, I mean, you can stop yourself from doing so many things because you're humble. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's some bullshit ass excuse to exactly. not have to put yourself out there and and take the criticism and then that's it. Okay, hola, bro. Look, this is the dude I'm talking about, Hector Medina. Oh, that's awesome. He mentioned you earlier, Hector. 
Sí. Dice que, que yo hablé de ti antes. Ah, he put you in a paro. Yeah, yeah, he was wrong, paro, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, dude. Um, is Hector there? Can we get like a little guest? You want me to bring him in? That was my plan. <laughs> Hector. Bring him in, dude. What the fuck? Hold on, hold on. Because you also have someone that wants to say hi to you. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, yeah, that's someone I want to see too. Hey, dude. <laughs> Me and Jane <laughs> literally watch him. The real. The, Come here. The real oh, the voice, dude. The, the real Hector is here now. The real Hector, <laughs> dog. Oh my God. The <laughs> voice you have a question for Ruby? Mm, I got a question. He was excited about I'm hearing this. myself. Somebody that's um, starting to write, actually. So um, thank oh, you so much for real. I'm gonna keep this um, for 24 hours, and then I'm gonna post the best part. I'm gonna leave some things out. And, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all and right. thank you all for watching. Thank you, Roby. Anything thank else you, you want to say? No, thank you, thank you, thank you. And and like I said, keep putting yourself out there. This is amazing, dude. Um, it's, it's, like I said, it's something a lot of people stop doing because of that fake humble shit, but nah, don't do that. And you're good at it, so keep doing it. Thank you. You're the best. Um, and I love you guys. <laughs> what time tomorrow? What? What time tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, he, he wants it again tomorrow, dude. That's Aw, honey. Maybe you can, the best actor, Roby, I agree. The hardest actor. And that's amazing. So glad to have talked to you and, um, yeah, I hope I see you guys before you leave. Yeah, no, I will be back too. I mean, LA is not really going to start anytime soon, so we'll probably True. be back. Oh, um, we can go visit you. Dude, tell them. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Ruby? All right. I'll Love you, you Val. Thank you so Thank much. You. Love you guys. Bye. Peace. That was perfect. It was everything I dreamt of. Janessa, thank you so much. I love you so much. Everybody, Ronnie, Mix, Ruth. Oh my God, the whole fam in this thing, man. Like so, so happy. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going live at 6 p.m. No, I'm kidding. Woo! 3 p.m. with uh, Seku. See ya.